Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1971 Seattle Pilots What If Scenario. Today's matchup is between the Seattle Pilots and the Chicago White Sox at Comiskey Park. On the mound for the Pilots today is Jorge Rubio, whose record is 1-0 with a 2.03 ERA. And pitching for the White Sox is Greg Ballo, whose record is 0-1 with a 3.86 ERA. Okay, uh, we are on a six-game winning streak, one that feels incredibly undeserved. Uh, we were 4-8 and eight when this streak started. And, you know, every game has been close. Uh, some wacky things have happened. We won a game yesterday where we walked 12 batters and struck out one. Was that right? I can't remember now. It was just, it was just yesterday. Um, we even had, yeah, that's right, because it was, it was 12 strikeout, or 12 walks, one strikeout yesterday. And I remember thinking after the game, didn't we have a game earlier this season where we walked eight and struck out none? So in two specific games, we've walked 20 batters and only struck out one batter. I, that's, a, that's ridiculous. It's so stupid how unrealistic this game can be. Um, and yet we're two games over 500. And if you look at our team stats, I mean, we're below average, the league average in batting average. We have you know, less power uh, based on our home runs compared to the American League. And our TBRA is almost a full run more than the average uh, in the American League. And yet we're two games above 500. Um, it does help that we're playing the lowly White Sox. Um, and we play against uh, Greg Ballo, who's only made one start this year. I think he's their second best starter, but he um, was injured in spring training and missed six, six weeks before he made his uh, first start. So this will be start number two for him today. Uh, he's facing Jorge Rubio, who, um, based on his ERA, is our best pitcher. So it should be interesting. After today's game, we do have a day off. So that means all the bullpen will be available today. Um, and then when the game's over, we'll advance a day to get to the Indians. We are almost to the end of the first month already, which is exciting. Um, if you don't know, at the end of every month, we do a end of the month summary video where we take a look at the standings, the league leaders. Um, I'm not sure whether I'm going to bring the player pyramid back yet. I, I've, I've not received any real accolades about it. And so... Um, it's not like it's a ton of work, but uh, if it's not really of interest, I, I, won't, um, I won't bring it back. I give the people what they want. And what they want is prizes. I've learned this uh, through years and years. I'm into my fourth year here at um, YouTube making these videos. And uh, tomorrow, we are giving away a prize. Uh, it is for members only, which right now, since we just started it, that only includes Freddie C. So he's going to win the prize hands down. Unless you get in on it today, uh, you have to be a member, which costs you $1.99 per month. Uh, starting uh, tomorrow, we get you in on the giveaway. And we can at least have a duck race between two ducks for the grand prize, which is this 1981 Topps Mike Schmidt record breaker card, most home runs. In a season by a third baseman, it is an SGC4, which is not a great grade, but it's encapsulated uh, in this really cool uh, black matted uh, uh, slab from SGC. And I think that's why SGC has become so popular, um, you know, maybe even surpassing uh, PSA because uh, their cards look so much nicer in these black slabs instead of the clear uh, PSA. I think PSA is still the most respected as far as their grades go. Uh, but I, if I were to grade this card, I mean, I think a four is probably right in the realm of what it deserves. It's off center. It's probably got some other condition issues. But the point of it is for $2, this card could be yours. You'll have a chance to win it. And then every month, at least for now, I will give away another graded card and your 
your dollar ninety nine entry will get you an opportunity to win that card. Uh, I'd like to get to a point where I'm giving a card away a week. Uh, if we got enough uh, members, that's what I would do. But we're just starting off with that concept. Um, it doesn't say it in our membership notes when you sign up to be a member. And that's because YouTube doesn't want us um, giving away prizes for money. Uh, and I get that. Um, a lot of people who give away prizes on, ba on um, YouTube, they do it through their Patreon page, which is like a secondary third party um, uh, way of uh, accepting money for things. And um, I don't want to do that. I just want to keep it simple right here on YouTube, at least for now. So, uh, there you go. You can win that prize by uh, donating the $2. You can do that by clicking the join button down below or going to our main page on YouTube and clicking on membership and then just follow along with what is going on there. Now, now giving away those prizes, that does not supersede the prizes that we give away for free every 40 games. Um, so this is game number 19. Tomorrow will be game number 20, so we're halfway to give away uh, the free prizes. This just helps you get away, get uh, something a little bit nicer. That's what we're all about here. Jorge Rubio making the start. Uh, everybody in the bullpen is available except for Ron Locke. And if we had to go with Locke, we might. Uh, simply because uh, we do have the day off tomorrow. Here's our lineup versus Greg Ballo. He's a right-hander, so we have our lineup in there versus righties. We're basically going with the same lineup from yesterday. Let's do the lineup rundown for the Seattle Pilots. Batting leadoff on a nine-game hitting streak is Tito Fuentes at second base. Batting second and catching is Manny Sanguian. Batting third in left field is Jose Cruz. Batting cleanup at first base is Darren Johnson. Batting fifth in right field is Joe Pepitone. Batting sixth in center field is Tommy Agee. Batting seventh at third base is Aurelio Rodriguez. Batting eighth at shortstop is Jerry Devanen. And batting ninth is the pitcher Jorge Rubio. Okay, Greg Ballo, who was out of baseball by 1967, is still participating and getting starts. Look at that back-to-back 13-9 -back records. He's making his second start this year. Well, in fact, he had a great season last year, now that I'm looking at it, with the exception of walking 35 more batters than he struck out. Please don't let this be another game like yesterday. You'll see his only start that he's made this year. He did walk four in that game, but he struck out six. His fastball tops out at 90 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 49.1%. The curveball is technically his only good pitch, and it's very good. It's rated a 93. Overall rated an 86. The 27-year-old righty is arbitration eligible at the end of the year. Look at his log. There it is. That's all you need to see. All right, let's take a look at the defense. For the White Sox, are they mixing it up? No. Same lineup. Problems out there in right with Terry Crowley. And at shortstop with Rich McKinney. Behind the plate is Ed Herman, who has a 76 rating. Potentially someone we could steal against. Okay, here we go. Tito Fuentes leading it off against Greg Ballo. I want to make note before we get started that I'm doing a little day drinking today. I haven't... This is not something I'm, I'm proud of. I'm just stating this. Since my birthday in May, I've only had one glass of wine. I haven't really been drinking. Not for any particular reason, other than, uh, you know, just taking a break from it. And today I'm going to jump off the wagon and drink drinking some wine, doing a little day drinking. I am typically an angry person in general, which is probably why I get so frustrated with this game. But when I'm having a drink or two, everything's fine. And so I feel like this game is going to be a, a little bit more easy to, to uh, digest because there'll be less anger involved. What the hell is that? A ground ball to second base. God, that's a terrible way to start. One up. Manny Sanguian, the catcher. Hey, there's a gapper. Can Sanguian get a double? A hustle a double. 
He's got five doubles this year. I think that ties him with Jose Cruz. It does. I, I think we have figured out one, two, three in the lineup. It's not always successful, but these guys do seem to hit. They do find ways to get on base. Is that a line drive or a ground ball? It's a line out to second. Cruz is out. Now this is where things get a little shaky with uh, four, five, and six. Well, actually really the rest of the way down the lineup. Here's Darren Johnson. He'll take ball four. Runners on first and second with two outs and Joey Pep is up. Pepitone, much like most of our players, only with one home run. It's a fly ball into right center field. We're going to strand those runners. Go to the bottom of the first. Let's take a look at the White Sox lineup for today. Batting leadoff. In center field is Angel Bravo. Batting second at shortstop is Rich McKinney. Batting third in left field is Carlos May. Batting cleanup and catching is Ed Herman. Batting fifth at first base is Bob Spence. Batting sixth at third base is Bill Melton. Batting seventh in right field is Terry Crowley. Batting eighth at second base is Rich Morales. And batting ninth is the pitcher Greg Ballo. Okay, we'll take a look here at Jorge Rubio making his fourth start. He's fared pretty well. He's 1-0 and with a 2.03 ERA. Seven walks, seven strikeouts. That's not great. In 13 and a third innings pitched, opponents are only batting 174 against him. Fastball topping out at 91 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 47.3%. Only one good pitch. That's the slow curve. Overall rated as 79. The 25-year-old righty is a free agent at the end of the year. Here's his log. Look at that. Six innings of no run ball. Gave up two hits and two walks. Maybe one of the better performances of the season from any of our starters. And that was his first win. Okay, let's take a look here at our defense. Pretty solid. I like having Devannon at short. I feel like he's the much better hitter than Belanger. Um, and with whatever we do that, I feel like we got to have Rodriguez at third to cover more ground. And also, it's nice to have Fuentes at second base. Also has a good range. Right field's a problem with Pepitone, although he does lead the team in outfield assists and behind home plate is Mandy Singian, who is solid. Okay. Angel Bravo leading off, batting 189 this year versus right-handers. 2-2 Two -two count, and Rubio strikes him out. One out. Here's Rich McKenney batting under 100. 129 overall. Fly ball to center field. Two down. Here's the second best hitter on the team. Carlos May batting 225. I make a joke. And then he hits a home run. It's a ground ball to short. That'll do it. Okay, we go to the second inning. Tommy Agee leading it off. We've got to get Agee going. He gets jammed inside. Ground ball to second. We really don't have anyone else that can play center field. Um, as an everyday player, we have to really let AG go out there and try to get on base like Rodriguez. Has he been hit by a pitch already this year? No, that's his first time. Rodriguez on first. Um, Jerry Devanden will let him swing away. And a base hitting the left field. Rodriguez will hold. White Sox pulling the corners in. That's the right thing to do because we're going to try to drop it like it's hot. I don't really quote Snoop Dogg enough. Now that he's America's grandfather on every show. Uh, a good job by Rubio getting the base runners over. Let's see if Fuentes can keep his hit streak alive. Maybe drive in a run. 0-2. Oh, he also gets jammed inside with a ground ball to short. 
We strand the two runners again. We go to the bottom of the second. Here is Ed Herman batting 419. Ground ball to third. Plenty of the time with the catcher running. One out. Bob Spence, 2-2. Two -two. Fly ball to left. What was their team batting average? It's got to be worse than ours. And Bill Melton, there's a walk. So Melton's on first. He's the first base runner for the White Sox. Terry Crowley up next with a 1-2 count and a 2-run home run. Crowley's fourth home run of the year? He had five last year in 247 at-bats. And he's got four this year in 67 at-bats. 2-0 Chicago. And then Rich Morales hits a ground ball to Devannon, who throws it away. Devannon, how many errors does he have? I feel like a ton. No, only two in 13 games. It is the pitcher spot up. Greg Ballo, 0-2. Oh. That's how it's going to be. A double for a pitcher? No way. Yeah, you strike out the leadoff hitter. You can't get the pitcher out. 3 nothing, Chicago. Are those all unearned runs? What am I doing? Uh, game stats. No, nope, two of them were earned on the home run. Okay, we're down 3 nothing. We've already left four stranded, so uh, things don't feel right. There's the second walk for Ballo. One swing of the bat from Darren Johnson will get us right back in the ball game. Swinging is not his strong suit. And a ground ball that gets past the third baseman. Melton misses it, and that's an RBI double for Pepitone. Run scores from first. That's shocking. That is his first double of the year. Tenth RBI. I think he leads the team in RBI with Rich Rollins. 0-1 to Tommy Ag. Fly out to left. You go to the bottom of the third. 3-1 to one. Chicago. Yep, so it's not a baseball mobile game unless there's one or multiple unearned runs in a ball game. And he walks McKinney. Here comes the heart of the order, Carlos May. Flies out to center, McKinney. Uh, I figured he'd probably tag because that's what they always do. That's the exact same play, practically, as Herman flies out to center. And Bob Spence with a 2-2 count. Striking out, looking. Nice. Good bounce back in for Rubio. We go to the top of the fourth. Aurelio Rodriguez leading off. He walked the first time up. Popping it up here to Morales for out number one. Here's JDV. I'll come back here to the pitcher. And Rubio pounds it into the dirt. 50-50 error. Yeah, it's almost always an error. I say 50-50, but it's like 75% now. Throwing error by the uh, catcher, Herman. That will bring up Tito Fuentes. Looking for that hit. A one. Popping it up. Damn it. I don't think he's going to get it. But I will drink some wine. Do you remember what what video was it where I tried to? Um, oh, it was back when I was had my um, live uh, feed up here in the corner where I had my face as we played the game, and I tried to uh, chug a glass of wine. Anyway, I couldn't do it. Oh God, that was funny. 
I wish I remember what game that was. It was like the 83 or 84 Tiger Series? Yeah. Bill Melton pops it up a foul ground on the first base side for out number one. Terry Crowley's already gone deep. There's a ground ball to Rodriguez. Sure-handed. And Rich Morales lines it to right. It does fall in for a hit. I used to not care when number eight hitters got hits in front of the pitcher spot, but Bottle's already one for one with an RBI. He pops it up in the foul ground. All right. Top of the fifth. Here's Manny Sanguian. He's got a double. There's a blooper. Base hit. Little duck snort. Um, no. We'll just take the single and like it. Let's hit and run. First time this game, we've got the runner moving. And a ground ball to short. That will get Sanguian over. Unfortunately, it's a 105 hitter up in our cleanup spot. Oh, he gets hit. That's the second batter hit today by Greg Abalo in his career. Oh, he hit nine last year. Those were the first two uh, this season so far. First and second, one out. Joey Pep, one, two. Uh, around the horn, double play. Yeah, we're, we're clearly not going to win today. That's what sucks, but we'll play it out. Oh, and then we hit that guy right, hit Angel Bravo right in the head. Is there some, I mean, do you think there's something built in uh, to the programming where pitchers will hit a batter on the other team after uh, their players have been hit a couple times? I mean, that... That seems so unlikely to happen. I feel like it has to have been some part of it. But let's say he was trying to get revenge. Let's hypothetically make it a, a real-world scenario. Why would you hit the fastest guy on the team? That's so stupid. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. So that's why this game is such a terrible, terrible game. It's so poorly programmed. And now he's going to give up a ton of runs, and there's nothing we're going to be able to do to prevent that from happening. We'll pull the infield in, but it don't matter. Ground ball to short. Awesome, second error by Devannon, and this, this is all done now. All unearned runs. We went from having one earned run, unearned run, to now having three unearned runs. And a walk. Still nobody out, by the way. Not a single batter out. And another error. So it's off the rails now. It's a double play, but a run will score. No RBI. Another walk. Oh. Great job, baseball mogul. Two errors. A home run. Hit batter. Five runs. Later, it's 8-1. to one. Aurelio can't get it past the pitcher. Jerry Devannon's made, already made a couple errors today. Rubio, I mean, okay, again, let me point this out for the one millionth time. The only reason Jerry Devannon got a hit instead of just getting out like he normally would is because the pitcher spots up next. That's the only reason he's two for three today to make us make a decision, in which case this time it's pretty simple. He's out. And then the strikeout, like it never mattered anyway. All right. Aramo, we haven't pitched him in a while because he's been so horrible. He's gonna be the first guy cut. Uh, probably in the next, yeah, because we have, um, 
Herbal the Gerbil coming back the next game, I think. So with Ron Locke pitching so well, we will probably cut Ramon Hernandez and give him uh, give Locke Hernandez a spot. Okay, this might be the last chance for Fuentes to keep his hit streak alive. And that's going to do it. Nine-game hitting streak comes to an end. Manny Sanguian's got three hits today. Yeah, I was just going to say, we're due to get a couple runs. There's no way that Greg Ballo is going the rest of the way without giving up runs. It can't be a seven-run um, a seven run, uh, differential. So Cruz hits his second home run of the year. Yeah, he's got eight extra base hits. Darren Johnson, another offer for him. Joey Pep, base hit. Why not? Hey, there's a double for Joey Pep. He's got two today. First two of the season. Only when it doesn't matter at all. And a routine ground ball for AG. All right. We'll let Ramon pitch again. With an 11 ERA, I mean, the likelihood he's going to give up any runs is very low. The game automatically is going to try to get him to get that ERA under 10 at least. Yeah, see? We could have him pitch the rest of the way. He would not give up a run. Not because he's pitching so well, but because the game has already predetermined the result. All right, Hernandez will come out here. I think, even though there's nobody on base, we'll bring in Rich Rollins. I mean, look at this guy. Uh, one one and a ground ball to short or line drive perhaps it was a line out all right we'll bring in some other schlub Ray Peters is only thrown one uh, five and a third inning so he'll wrap up these three outs here Morales is Morales, is that just morale plural? Asking for a friend. Can we go around the horn, please? That is like our fourth double play. And we've already given up eight runs. Dan Osinski. He was a White Sox pitcher in real life, 1969. Uh, that's what this card is, right? And so he wasn't even pitching. Yeah, it's only his third opportunity. Oh, Tito Fuentes is going to get a shot. Let's go, Tito. Come on, man. Give us something to root for today. Oh, you bitch. He did get on base. I don't really, you know, that whole consecutive games on base, that's not a real stat. I don't care that shit. Tried to hit and run with Manny Sanguin, but he goes three for five. Jose Cruz, probably our player of the game today. Yep, that'll get another run. And there's his sixth double of the year. And it's 8-4. to four. Oh, are they going to get it within um, a safe situation? That makes a lot of sense. That's what the game does. It's all part of the programming. Yep. As Darren Johnson drives in a run. And they'll bring in a closer. I don't know. There's only one out. Joey Pep. Oh, another gamper. Pepitone's got three doubles today. Oh, it's a triple. Holy shit. I mean, we're going to lose the game no matter what, but at least it's making it interesting, right? 
Um, God, do we just take, do we pinch hit? AG? I mean, he sucks so bad. I would almost rather have Belanger in there. Oh well. We win and die with AG. That's, yeah, that's going to get the final run in. And now they'll bring in the closer. Oh no! Well, now we need a home run. Now, Aurelio had nine home runs last year, but I. I don't feel like he's got any power this year. He's got gap power. Do we have anybody on the bench who's got higher than 83? Not Jita. No, definitely not Belanger. And not the Rip. Ah, oh, crap. All right, well, we lose by one. White Sox win, 8-7. to seven. We have a day off here. We'll play. Let's see. I can't believe there haven't been any trades among the computer AI teams, and we're almost through the month of April. In a way, I think trades really start to happen once teams are more than 10 games out. Then they start trading off some of their players. I don't think we're at that point yet. White Sox might be the closest in the American League. We'll take a look at the standings. Uh, the White Sox are 10 games out, even with the victory. There's the National League. Montreal's eight games out. How are they eight games out? Look at this lineup. Oh, wait, no, they, they traded um, Boog Powell, didn't they? They got Santo, they got Rusty. They had Boog Powell. They got a very young Brian Downing. Yeah, I think when they got rid of Boog, that sort of killed them. Because they had a murderer's row there in, in the um, heart of the lineup. Yeah, their pitchers are are good names, but not they're not there yet. All right. Um, okay, let's take a look at headline news. Brainiac Baseball de la Bouy. Roar in control as the Royals beat the Angels. Here's a little nugget of trivia. In the very first ever draft, everyone probably should know by now, uh, that Rick Monday was the number one pick in 1965. The number two pick was Les Rohr. There you go. Uh, next up is Minnesota win. It knocks Cleveland from first. Ricky be Ricky. First place. Oh, I got to. I I made the note and then I didn't do it. I got to make the note again about getting Mel Stottlemyre. Okay, fix this card. Let's take a look at the transactions. Uh, a couple of things. A former pilot, Jose Vidal, is going to miss a month. It's too bad. Actually getting a chance to play every day, despite not being able to be a defender with a low rating. That's uh, not very often you get those chances. Joe Sparma of the Tigers, in a Tiger uniform, but on the Expos there. Oh, he hasn't even played this year. So he was in the minors anyway. In fact, he hasn't played since he won the World Series with the Tigers. And Tom Buskey, I hate this card. This is one of my least favorite cards of all time. Uh, he's going to miss 15 days for the Yankees in the minors. Uh, did we cover Jib Dixon last time? I can't remember. Oh, yeah, we did. Okay. He had the broken fibula. Okay, let's go ahead and pull up the box score and get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Last chance to get in on the member giveaway. If not, it's going to go right into Freddy's uh, mailbox, and that's okay. Um, we'll have another giveaway next month for sure. Uh, wow, player of the game, I kind of want to give it to Pepito now. He had two doubles and a triple. Jose Cruz just had a double and a home run. So more total bases for Pepito. Uh, although Jose Cruz did have a walk. Hmm, it's going to be Pepitone. 
Jorge Rubio takes the loss. You really can't blame him. It's all errors, three errors. Uh, we did have lots of double plays to make up for that as they hit into three double plays. A double by the pitcher. That was the end of the ball game right there. Greg Ballo also gets the win in addition to the uh, double. Dan Osinski gives up four runs in an inning, and that's only because he had to, not because he was ever going to give up five. Okay, we're going to come back tomorrow and start a brand new series versus the Indians, and we're going to give away uh, that 1981 Mike Schmidt graded card. Get in on it. A dollar ninety nine. You're going to spend a dollar ninety nine on something stupid. This could be something you could win and have in your collection, or turn around and sell it for twenty bucks. Make a profit. I don't care. Um, all right, we'll be back tomorrow. Until then, everyone, have a great day.